Hey guys, this is all the combined parts of my 100 of every Minecraft block series, and I just want to say thank you for the support on this series. It's been ridiculous growing from 100 to 500 subscribers. It's wild. Anyway, enjoy 40 plus minutes of me losing my mind and the journey from nothing to everything. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is highly edited to stop it from being way too long, so if you see something that looks out of place, just keep that in mind. Anyway, to start off, I wanted to find a village to establish a base of operations to get a few things down. Well, there's our village, right? Like, Whilst going to loot a shipwreck, I found a village, so there's the first one of the goals complete. I found a treasure map in the shipwreck, so then I went to look for that. Then after spending a bit of time making some tools and armor, I hit up the mines to get some materials to build some farms. I won't show you all the mining because that would literally take hours. I wanted to make some observers for a farm, so I got some obsidian to make a portal for the nether. 7, 8, 9, 10. After gathering the quartz and all the materials required, I made a start on the wheat farm. Building up the walls was the next step, and right after, I kidnapped a villager to work under really healthy conditions. Looks like a fish. And after giving him some seeds and tilling the dirt, the farm was done. Next step on the list was to make a villager breeder, so after building the frame up, I kidnapped two more villagers and sent them to their life sentence. Yes. Yes. And you're away. I can just drop you like this. Stupid idiot. Yes! Yippee. The reason for the villager breeder is because I wanted to make an iron farm, which requires quite a few villagers to make a really efficient one. So after flattening out some ground and preparing some materials, I was ready to start the build. Here's the TLDR of the build. So I dug a 9x9x2 hole in the ground, then filled each corner with water, it's gonna... yep. and placed fences to stop the water flow. Next was to dig a 3x3 three three hole 30 blocks down. Then I built the resource collection system. Nice, it did. And finally, building four of these rooms to house the villagers and zombies. Once the rooms were built, I spent ages getting villagers into said rooms. Oh, there's already a nine gold. And same with the zombies. There was a slight problem when I finished that. Iron golems were spawning everywhere but the funnel, so I had to spend ages digging out a mountain. then spawn proofing the area. Alright, time for a purge. Then finally the farm oh, was bringing yeah. in some crazy results. Good. Since I had a bunch of iron, I could use that to trade for practically infinite emeralds of villagers, so I went to build a trading hole. And I have to say, I was and still am pretty happy with my work. Yes, you gave me what I want. Then I bought an efficiency 2 pickaxe and a silk touch axe. Thank you for that, good sir. And made some more trading stations. Oh yes, give me the fortune three. 
Then I started gathering blocks for the challenge, starting off the soils, which are shown on the screen right now. I also made a book and quill to write down every block that had been completed so far. Dirt I already had from digging that mountain out, so next was clay, and I went right to work. Alright, and that should be it. Add it to the chest. And... Gravel was next on my list of blocks, so that's what I did. Grass. Then gravel. I then spent ages mining a lectern. To get a looting book from a villager. Oh, there we go. And searched far and wide for a mangrove biome to get some mud blocks. All right, we're not doing suspicious versions either. Before going to a mushroom island, I needed silk touch, so back to the trading hall I went. Okay, so I've been traveling for like ages, right? Looks like I found my destination. Don't even get me started on how long it took for me to find mycelium, because I think it was something like two hours to find the biome. All right, that's that done. Straight off the mod, and we can write it down in the book. Got to give me Next was something a bit easier, nylium. I got the red and put it in the chest, and went back to get the blue a bit later. Nice. Okay, that's all the nylium. So after mycelium, it's red nylium. All right, one, two, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then we got... Nylium blue. Sand and red sand were pretty easy, as I was nice. close to a beach for normal sand. And a badlands for the red version of it. Nice. We have a hundred red sand. Then I decided to get the rest of the dirt types, being coarse and rooted dirt. Okay. First up was coarse dirt. And for whatever what reason, I, I couldn't find oh my like, God. any it's an azaleas tree. until finally rooted I actually found one dirt. and got all the rooted dirt needed. All right. Apparently I got pods all with the rooted dirt at some dirt. point during the journey, but I could not find when for the life of me. Pods all. so rooted dirt and pods all. Okay, let me just speed run the rest of these soils, because to be honest, I don't want to bore you, Ross, because all Yo's attention time is less than three minutes for real. That. Brain rot. Right. And the next soul soil. Alright, that soil's done. Since the soil category had now been completed, we can focus on the stone category, which is all the blocks on the screen right now, and uh, yeah, that's quite a few. Let's just get these easy ones out of the way real quick for time's sake. So Nine, that's stone. 10, 11, 12. Alright, that is stone done. Granite. Alright, and that's granite done. Andesite. One more. Bang. That's andesite done. Cobbled deep slate. Alright. Diorite. Alright, that's diorite done. Basalt. And that is basalt done. Completed. Blackstone. Oh, All right. And calcite. No, ten. All right, we got it. Both pointed and dripstone blocks were a bit tough to get because I just couldn't find the cave for a good while. Nice. And last one. Seven. One, two, three. Okay. Five. And dripstone block. There were two blocks needed that can be easily acquired in the end. So I headed to the nether to kill some endermen. He tried. Alright, that's good enough. 20 pearls should be good. And blazes. Nice. To craft some eyes of ender for locating the stronghold. Right, we we'll go this way.
Oh, whilst I was searching for the stronghold, I found some tough, so I thought I may as well mine it whilst I was there. Nice. Then I built the portal to uh, fight the ender dragon. Wow. I've gotten good at that. Holy, what? Nice. And obtained some endstone. Nice. And obsidian. Back in the overworld at home, I set my sights on obtaining some nether blocks in this category. Four, like glowstone. Five. And we're done. Netherrack. One. And magma. Nice. Done. Netherrack. Done. And then One, both two, sandstones. Three, and we're done. And in goes the red Leaving sandstone. only all the terracottas and crying obsidian. Speaking of terracotta, I had a total of 17 different types to get, so I'm gonna speed run through all of them. Normal, all right, white, well. orange, red, yellow, light grey, and brown terracotta can all be found in the Badlands. So that's 7 out of 10 done. After farming the dyes required, I crafted the rest, being magenta, light blue, lime, pink, grey, cyan, purple, blue, green, and black. Got another mining trip. And last on the list was crying obsidian, which could prove very difficult, as the best way to obtain it was through piglin trading, so I'd need shit tons of gold, so after slaving away in the nether for ages, I traded until I was finished. Yes, we've done it. Okay, so the next category after stone is ores. Now amongst these, there are a few that stand out as being difficult to obtain, being ancient debris, because you know why, and deep slate emerald because it is super uncommon. So I kind of accidentally switched screens and didn't realize for a long while, like I was just recording what Y level is best for diamonds. So half the stuff I didn't capture when I obtained it. Sorry for that. Well, I guess in the time I wasn't recording the right screen, I got all of this stuff. After a lot more mining, I got Deep Slate Gold. Alright, these are the last two blocks. Deep Slate oh, Iron. Oh. Deep Slate yeah, well, Coal. Done. Then Deep deposited slate. everything so far. Diamond. Deep Slate. Then I went back to mining to finish what I started. And getting nice, Iron Ore. Finished. Coal Three, Ore. And that's Coal Done. Copper Three, Ore. Four. Bang, and that's Copper Done. Lapis Ore. Four. Yes, okay, and that's Lapis officially finished. Redstone Oh my ore. god, it's a perfect amount. Holy shit. Bang. That's gold ore. And lost one. Bang. And finally, diamond It's been ore. like three hours since I actually lost on recording again, and... Holy shit. These are the last two diamonds I need. One. Two. <sighs> Iron. Copper. Redstone. Coal. Lapis. Diamond. After a lot of traveling, I found a windswept hills biome to go get emeralds, as they only spawn in mountains. Alright, so I beg good news. This is my last emerald. The normal emeralds were pretty easy uh, and got them relatively quickly. Bad news. I have to get deep slate. But deep slate emeralds actually took me multiple recording sessions and lots of trips back to the base to get new pickaxes to actually get all the emeralds required. <laughs> oh my god, yes! That's the last one I need. Thank fuck. Now, if that wasn't hard enough, I still needed ancient debris, so I made these tunnel boards, but they were pretty shit. Yes, it does. Woohoo! So I went with the good old bed method. Oh, nice. Nice. Many hours had passed at this point, so and upon this explosion, I had finally finished. I actually ended up staying for longer to get myself enough for full netherite gear. Alright, nice. After looting a bastion... So I would one. I'm gonna get out of here now. Lots of villager trading. And enchanting. 
Hopefully this sipping edge gives me something good. That's very nice. I finally managed to make my full set of netherite gear. There we go. We can get off this stinky armor. Lastly, I got all types of ice, which was okay, part of the next nice. category, because I kind of thought I was done with stone. Ice. At least I have respiration. Yeah, okay, we're done. One, two, three. Okay, and then we can tick off all the ice. The rest of the stone category was recorded quite far in the future, as I forgot for a while, so just keep that in mind. Well, firstly, I visited lots of amethyst geodes until I managed to get every size amethyst spot. Small, medium, large, amethyst cluster. The nether ores were pretty simple, just some casual mining in the nether and in bastions. Rewinding a bit from where we left off last episode, I decided to start off simple with the woods and high face section, consisting of all these blocks you see on screen right now. For this I would need to visit a lot of different biomes, like tigers, jungles, savannas, and even roofed forests. Oak, birch, two, three, four. and acacia were pretty close, so I decided to start with those. Okay. Whilst I was there, I got 200 of each type of wood because I would need both the normal logs and the strip versions. Alright. I'm not here to bore you all, so I'm just going to skip through the mining and stripping woods in Haifa through the way of the montage. What's next on the list? Except, I did the screen switch thing again, so- Oh my god, I swear to god, if I've been recording the other screen for a while, I'm actually gonna kill myself. You have done all this. I didn't record jungle, dark oak, and spruce. I'm so sorry. But after that little mishap, I did manage to complete everything in this section. Or, so I thought. Because, you see, there are these things called wood blocks, which are entirely different to logs, requiring four logs to craft three of these blocks, meaning I would need another 600-ish of each type of log to get both normal wood blocks and stripped wood blocks. So after another while of grinding, which I'll spare you from watching, I managed to get there eventually. Once half of that wood was all stripped up. Done. Yes. Would you look at that? Bang, 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 the category of bang, wooden hypha was bang. finally complete. You know what that means? We can start the plants category and there is so much on it. I physically cannot show you all of it. So here are some that might prove a bit difficult to obtain being spore blossoms, hanging roots, pitcher plants and torch flowers. But yeah, that's it really. First up, I decided to head to a lush cave. Nice. Okay. One, Mainly to get both the flowering two, and normal azalea. Three. And just scrounge whatever other blocks I could find in there, like moss. One, two. Moss carpets. Nice. Drip leaves. And glowberries. Keep in mind, these clips are not in order. Also, I didn't get all the glowberries. After a well needed break, I came back the next day to go to the jungle. To get some melons. And bamboo. And cocoa. That I could grow back at base. Speaking of growing things, I made this little farm so I could grow whatever I needed at the time. For example, at this point in time, it was beetroot for the seeds. And whilst I waited for that beetroot to grow, I thought it would be a good idea to get cactus, found in deserts and badlands. One, two, and last one. Here we go. Got it all. Alright, let's write this down in the book. Next on the list was carrots, so I extended the farm and planted the carrots I had, and left them to grow. Remember those glowberries I got a bit ago? 
I decided to plant them in the trading hole for a bit of aesthetics and to farm them later on. After planting the glowberries, I needed to get chorus flowers, which are only found in the end, which was good timing because I needed to get an elytra as well. Whilst I was there, I decided to get all the purple block types. End rods. And a bunch of shulker shells for later. Then in my absolute genius, I thought it would be a good idea to make a creeper farm for two main reasons. The first is pretty simple as elytras need fireworks to use as a consistent mode of transport, and secondly is if I wanted to get the 4000 odd ancient debris, I would need a consistent way of finding it. That would so happen to be TNT, as it can blow up the nether pretty nicely. So I decided to prepare the blocks before starting the build. And halfway through gathering said materials, I saw the bamboo forest had grown significantly, so I thought it was about time to check off bamboo in all its forms off the list. Anyways, I then went and searched for a deep ocean to help maximise the farm's spawn rates, and began building. Which after 4 gruelling hours, it was finally complete, and brought in some very good results. Well, back to the task at hand, I'm just going to go through some that were pretty right, easy well, to get, get such as bushes. dead bushes, ferns, all the flowers types except torch flowers, and grass. Hanging roots was tough though, as they only spawn under azalea trees if there are air blocks underneath the rooted soil. The only reason I was able to do this is because after a while of mining them, I realized they can be farmed. So that's what I did for the rest of the remaining amount. I forgot to mention, whilst I was down there, I got the rest of the glowberries as well. All the different leaf types were pretty simple. I just had to locate the individual biomes again. In the mangrove biome, I also got mangrove roots, muddy mangrove roots, and lily pads. And we're done with lily pads. Also, whilst I was in the cherry fields, I got the required pink petals nice. too. Okay. With a quick trip back to the jungle, I was able to get melons done easily. Last melon. Nice. Pitcher plants and torch flowers are interesting, as they are only obtainable through sniffers, which you have to hatch an egg for, that you can only find in suspicious sand and gravel in underwater ruins and my dumbass did not know, so I was digging around in sand temples, the complete wrong place. Anyway, I eventually got back on track. Oh my god, man. Finally. And after yes. a while, managed yes. to dig up it's two true. of them, the perfect amount. And to finish off this session, I made a little farm for the sniffers. After some AFKing to hatch the sniffers, I decided it would be a good idea to build one more of these farms, to increase the efficiency as they were a bit too slow for my liking. So after a bit of building, I had them finished. Whilst I was building that, I did a bit of crop harvesting, completing carrots, beetroots, and potatoes. At this point in time, I only had 12 blocks left to get for this category. Knowing this, I went straight to work to complete sugarcane, Bang. plant some pumpkin seeds, and get seagrass from the ocean. There we go, got all the seagrass we need. Sweet berries, vines, done with vines. wheat seeds, 
And hay bales. Oh my god, you're stacked. Hey. Right. We're very simple, as you can see. It was all a ploy to distract me from the real upcoming enemy of this category. Saplings, as there are seven different types that come from different trees, and they only drop with a 5% chance. Alright, and this should be the last sapling I need, actually. That took way too long. Alright, so these are the last two saplings. I think, yep. Alright, well, this is our last sapling. Knock you down. Bang. There it is. Nice, 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 nice. Thank god that took way too long. Oh, this is my last sapling. Okay, no mind. Then I thought it would be a good idea to finish what I started by getting the spore blossoms left over. You can tell I'm sick of this category. I sound so dead here. Oh, there's our last spore blossom. Finally, I've been out here for hours. <sighs> pumpkins! <clears throat> I mean, I harvested the pumpkins and made some into carved pumpkins to tick them off the list. Carved pumpkin. Well, after some more AFK sessions, I finally had all the required pitcher pods to tick them off the list, so I planted them to harvest later. And after a while, both the pitcher plants... ...and torch flowers were ready for harvest. And thus, the plants category was finally finished. Next category was fungi, consisting of all the blocks shown on screen right now. It was fairly easy category, so I'll knock it out in a minute or two. First up was everything in the crimson forest biome. One. And one more. Bang. Then I did the same thing for the warped forest. Alright, well, we're done. And this goes here. Easy so far. Glow lichen was next, which was pretty simple, as all I needed was one yeah. of them, which I could bone meal to grow more. next to the fungies. Anyway, and we'll write everything down because I haven't- Well, literally everything remaining can be found on a mushroom island, except nether wart, of course. There's stems. We have nether wart. Nether what required me to go back to a fortress, which wasn't that bad. There we go, and we can put it in, and I think that's fungi done. Let me check. Yep, done. And that officially completes the fungi category. Three more to go. This category is a quick one, consisting of literally two blocks. So down I went to get like 16 stacks of kelp, and cooked them up to get both dried kelp block and basic kelp. Next category is fauna, consisting of literally every type of coral block shown on screen. Also just want to mention quickly, I'll not be getting every single dead version of them. So there I was committing mass eco-terrorism, for your entertainment. Are you happy? Look at this dolphin. If you love dolphins, leave a like. Yeah, I'm shameless like that. I'm tired of editing this, not gonna lie, so I'm just gonna speed run this. First up was beehives, which was difficult and had a death along the way. Alright, so there's the bees. Anyway, just went to the Soul Sand Valley for bone blocks. Alright, done. Cobwebs, I've paid my nearest Badlands mine shaft to visit. 13, 14, we should be done. Sniffer eggs, you already yeah. know how I got these. Bang. And turtles, I just flew around and bred every pair of turtles in sight. I think that's a bit too many particle effects. Three just for me? Four! Finally, this is the last category, and it's just sc Oh, it's Sculpt. I can't catch a fucking break, can I? Well, no point bitching about it. Here are the blocks in this category. Well, I suppose I had to find an ancient city, city, and I decided it would be a good idea to get the Shriekers down first, to limit Warden spawns, but they're inevitable, I guess. Run, 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 run. 
Anyways, I mined all the Shriekers, Catalyst, and still didn't have enough to complete it. So I had to go to another city, which after looting that, I managed to complete the category. Officially complete by order. The first category of many on this list is lighting category, consisting of blocks like candles, end rods, frog lights, jack-o'-lanterns, lanterns both normal and soul versions, sea lanterns, and finally both versions of torches. First up was candles. I wouldn't be getting every colour of said candles cause I'm too lazy, but for the normal candles I needed to go back to an ancient city which wasn't a hassle cause all the shriekers were gone. Done, candles are done. End rods I already previously acquired when I was in the end getting chorus flowers in part 2. End rod done. For frog lights, I collected a bunch of tadpoles to get the frogs that will eat the magma cubes to obtain said frog lights, which I decided to build a farm for to avoid the hassle. So after gathering the materials, travelling to a basalt delta, and glitching to the nether roof, it was finally time to make a start on the build. And with the better part of an hour, it was complete, bringing in some wild results for a bit of AFK time. So yeah, I just started the recording and um, got my aqua frog lights. Jacko lanterns and normal lanterns were pretty simple. Jeez, lanterns are expensive. And soul lanterns I got in the ancient city a while back, leaving normal and soul torches as well as sea lanterns. The two types of torches were pretty simple, just requiring a bit of crafting. However, Sea Lanterns had me kill three Elder Guardians in a monument, then just go mining in said monument. Oh, we've gotten all of our Sea Lanterns. To finish up the category nicely. Bang, bang, and that's lighting category. Denzo. Well, the next category after that was Ornamental, consisting of all the blocks shown on screen right now. And first up on said list was Bamboo Mosaic, which was pretty simple due to the massive bamboo forest I have. Yep, perfect. Done. The Andrew mistakes already done. I initially thought bookshelves would be difficult, cause I thought I would have to trade for them. But I then remembered the Stronghold Libraries has shit tons of bookshelves, so going there solved all my problems. And we done with bookshelves. I'm only doing one colour of carpet and wool, so with that being said, carpet, Bang. 38 chains, and decorated pots right. were not tough at all. And yes, I'm not doing a hundred of every single pot, because there are literally 194,481 unique pots that can be crafted. Subscribe, and I might get one of every pot for a video. Just kidding, I won't ever do that. So, somehow I managed to misplace a video when cleaning out my storage. I didn't do too much in the video, just get every fence possible, and then iron bars, so nothing too serious. But anyway, moving on. A new honeycomb was up and coming, so I decided to build a quick farm for that. And after building that farm, I made it my goal to knock out everything glass on the list, including all stained glass colours. First up was normal glass, and glass panes. Then tinted glass only required a few amethyst crystals, and stained glass and their respective panes only required a bit of dye gathering. And this will mark glass panes done. Glazed terracotta was next, and since I kind of already showed the process of getting the normal terracotta in the first video, we're just going to skip over this straight to the results. Bang, we're done with glazed terracotta. To end off the day, I went to the nether to AFK for a couple hours, and when I logged back on the next day, we had enough honeycomb to immediately make the required blocks. Next was slabs, and there was a lot of them, like 49 different variants. I don't even know if I can show them all on screen, so I'm just going to chuck them up randomly, and just show me crafting all of them.
You see that process? Yeah. We gotta do that two more times for both stairs and walls. And that's gonna get boring watching that, so I'll just show you the chest at the end. And last on the list was wool. So I just sheared my sheep and we were done with the ornamental category. Now here comes the category that is gonna cause me the most pain. Mineral blocks, which has all these blocks. The ones of most difficulty are most likely diamond, emerald, and definitely netherite block. Well, I'll show you how this category went right now. First up was block of amethyst, which only took a bit of mining in one amethyst geo to actually get all of the 100 blocks needed. Okay, first up is block of amethyst. Easy peasy. Coal wasn't the hardest and only took about 40 minutes to get all the coal mined up and ready to craft. My calculations are correct. And done. Trying to block the coal down. Copper was actually deceptively difficult as there are three different block types needed. And yes, that is excluding the oxidized forms. I ain't doing those. Well anyways, copper needs like 2,700 individual pieces of copper. And 1,800 of those need to be smelted so I can craft the normal blocks and the cut copper blocks. So a couple days of mining later, and here we are with all of our copper. We're done. And to no one's surprise, iron block was probably the easiest one, due to that farm I built in episode 1. Bang, we're done with iron blocks. I decided to delay the inevitable of getting diamond block for a bit longer, and instead put my focus towards getting redstone blocks and also lapis afterwards, which didn't take super long. Alright, perfect. Now, for Emerald Block, the reason why it was difficult is not because it's rare, it's because it is time consuming as I had to wait for villagers trades to come back up and also the iron farm to refill. So I sat there for a few hours trading with villagers until I could craft the 100 Emerald Blocks. We can hit craft on this. Once the Emeralds were finished, that meant I could hit up the mines to go grinding for hours on end to get diamonds. Let me keep going. Oh, diamond. Please, I'm begging you, have enough. Okay, we have enough. Yes, 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 I can get out of here. Bang, we're done with diamond blocks. Yippee, that took way too long. And to finish up this recording session, I went to the nether to tick off everything quartz through mining way too much nether quartz ore to be considered healthy. Well, you get the idea. Here's the crafting. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be back once I've gotten a bunch more cords apparently. And yeah, I had to go back to get some more. That chisel was done. Oh, we're gonna have to go back in. Oh, we were on the last block. Perfect timing. There we go. Done so. So we've only got. Cut. So let's only get straight into it. Line. Well, this happens at least once every episode. I removed the keybind, so it definitely won't happen again. Well, in good news, I managed to catch the screen switch in time for crafting everything. Because that's what you came here for, right? Right? Well, I'll just show what happened with the paint diagram, because that's close enough to the real thing. Anyway, I used my Elytra to fly to the Mesa, and then just went digging around to find my gold. I put that away, then went to the Nether to raid two bridge bastions for like 20 gold blocks each. And the rest I just mined Nether gold, which was surprisingly effective. And for iron, I found those, like, massive iron ore veins that have the raw blocks in the middle and got all of it in one trip, and that brings us back to the footage of crafting it. Bang. Yep, we're done here now. What you're going to see here now is me getting netherite blocks, which need 3,600 ancient debris, which actually took a couple of months of blowing up TNT to accomplish. So of course there is going to be a lot of footage that has been skipped over. Oh fuck it, I'm lighting up running. So from our first day of mining we got like this amount of ancient debris, which is like 128, 158, that ain't that bad. 
four blocks from all that. Well, I knew I was in for a rough time after day one. Skipping past a few days to week one, I had saved up a shit ton of ancient debris, which was pretty respectable. Okay, okay, okay. So it's been a few days since I've last shown you all what's inside this box. Now, when I say a few days, I mean like a couple weeks because I've been playing on and off because, to be honest, can't really be bothered. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've used up all the gunpowder and more because, you know, I've been AFK at the farm and stuff and I've got myself an absurd amount of ancient debris. I don't think it's enough to craft the amount we need yet, but it's, it's good. <laughs> that is sad. That is like... Almost a thousand. Fast forward another week and a bit of me absolutely obliterating the nether. We had some pretty decent progress. About another 1,000-ish of ancient debris. Okay, okay, okay. So it's been another week and a bit. And, well, probably more than a week again. But anyway. That's beside the point. This is the box. This one right here. That I've got another shit ton of ancient debris, and I'm ready to show you. We after this, we'll probably have one more box left, and we'll be done. Look at that. How much do you reckon that is? Not enough. I can tell you that. Anyway, I'm gonna get to smelting this, and I'll be back. And the final third kind of took the longest, cause I was burnt out. But we pushed on and managed to scrounge up the final amount needed in one shulker box to put this block off the list once and for all. Yes, yes, I did it. My math is correct. Oh my god. <sighs> Would you look at that? So beautiful. Also, for any haters, here's the stats. Yes, I actually did it. Too long doing that. But it looks so nice. Well, here we are. Final category and it just consists of blocks we've already gotten to craft things like stairs and slabs, so I won't bother showing the process of obtaining a lot of them. Okay, First of all, we're just bricks, finished. cobblestone, and cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, and cobbled deep slate, which are all pretty self-explanatory. Concrete and concrete powder was up next, which requires a bunch of sand and gravel, as well as water to put the powder in to turn it into concrete. Also, for this one, I wasn't bothered getting every color. Alright. Okay, so all the versions of sandstone, including red, were dead easy, just requiring a bit of smelting, but that's it. Smooth goes here. Smooth other thing goes here. Old Deep Slate took a negligible amount of time. Correct. Bricks. And stone, a quick trip to the end. And same with nether bricks, except I went to the nether to get everything. Chiseled. Cracked. Then we go for red. Before putting the cracked nether bricks in, I went to the mangroves to get some mud to make packed mud and mud bricks. Then after that, I went to all the biomes for every wood type to craft their respective planks. Okay, so I've been all over the world getting this to craft into planks, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Oak, spruce, spruce, jungle... Dark oak, mangrove, fairy, bamboo, crimson, what? The rest of this category is just a bunch of different versions of stone, blackstone, and prismarine. Oh, there was also the purple I got in the end the first time I visited. This is the, all of the building box category. Definitely the biggest category I've done yet. It was a pain in my ass. The first category on our list is interactable blocks, which shouldn't cause us too much trouble if you ignore both beacon blocks and shulker boxes, which could cause me a bit of pain, but anyways, for those who care, here are the blocks we need to get. And first up are anvils, which just required me to visit my nearest iron farm. Well, I believe after a bit of AFK I've gotten all the iron here if my calculations are correct, so... And craft up the anvils. They do stack. There we go. Yep, see? Absolute perfect. To lead me into barrels, leading me to cause mass deforestation of my nearby forest. And skipping past the beacons, we will come back to that eventually, but right now we are looking at brewing stands, needing a hundred blaze rods, so I went on a little genocide of the native blaze population. Alright, 
what we've done here. And there's a hundred. Meaning the first three blocks have been finished. When that was finished, I went back to chopping some wood to get both cartography tables and chests completed. Next up was getting a total of 1,200 obsidian for ender chests and enchanting tables, which was just a trip to the ender way, so nothing too complicated. Alright, so we've gotten all of our obsidian here. Also got the required pearls when I was there. Nice. Got the perfect amount. Just double check. And I already had the diamonds for enchanting tables in my storage. Perfect. Chiseled bookshelves, crafting tables, and fletching tables only really needed wood, so I won't show me chopping more wood. Hey. Bang. Then I went mining for a bunch of stone to get all the furnace types, being normal furnaces, blast furnaces, and smokers, requiring some absurd number of cobble, around 2,400 to be exact. Right, and I'm going to be done there for today. Because... Once I was finished grinding out cobble, I needed to get three of the villager trading stations, being grindstones, lecterns, and looms, all of which have some pretty simple crafting recipes, so it wasn't much stress. I think that should be grindstone stone. Has more than enough. Two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Actually, perfect amount. Nicely done. Alright, so I've got my loom materials here. I got the strings for my farm, my creeper farm that somehow spawns spiders. Uh, but yeah, loom time. We should have enough by my calculations. Perfect. Signs are actually deceptively difficult, as there are two types, with one of them requiring six strip logs to make. So if you do the math, it's around 51 logs for the normal signs, and another 102 strip logs for the hanging signs. And keep in mind, this is for one wood type. There are 11 different wood types in this game. You can even hear the moment when I realise this. So we get signs first. Oh. You know what it's time for? A wood collecting compilation. After that was finished, I went straight to crafting. So these three shulkers are full of all the hanging signs, that means we're done with signs. Fucking finally, took way too long for signs. Both the smithing table, bang, bang, yep, done. And stone cutter, again, just required a bit of wood and iron Perfect. to get them off the list, leaving me with beacons and shulker boxes. I decided to get shulker boxes first, cause it's just way easier than beacons. So to the end I went, spending ages hunting down end city after end city, purging all the shulkers in sight. Okay, well, here's our shulker. So this box also counts. That's what I'm saying. And we're also going to put the chest. All right. Done. That leaves us with only one block left, and definitely the most difficult in this category, being the beacon, requiring me to get 100 nether stars, which can only be dropped from the wither boss, requiring three wither skeleton skulls to summon, so in total 300 skulls will be needed. So to do this, I need to make a wither skeleton farm, which after getting the required materials. Okay, so um, we're back and I've gone and farmed all the materials for the, with the skeleton farm and here it is. So next on the list, we're gonna go find a soul sand valley nether fortress. Took a couple of hours to make. Alright, this is the moment of the truth. Apparently the farm is done. So, yeah. And after AFKing at the farm for a few days, I had the 300 skulls ready. I've gotten all the skulls. So that's cool, isn't it? Ah, uh, well not all the skulls, I actually need one more. But I was hoping to get that on camera. So I've got all the fellas lining up here. Oh, well, would you look at that? But no way to farm the wither itself. So underneath the end portal, I built this contraption that just entity crams the wither to death with okay, minecarts. That's 25 minecarts in one block. Giving me the 100 stars needed. Alright, so I'm back and we've actually finished the AFK and we've gotten 
all of our nether stars required. So I'm just going to go up there and mine the pillars for 300 um, obsidian. After mining the obsidian, it was finally time to craft. There's one. There's two. That's actually beautiful. You know what this means? We have officially finished the first category of this video. The next category we are looking at is the utilizable category, consisting of all these blocks, of which the conduit, lodestone, and respawn anchor will be the most difficult to get. First up, I decided to try and get bells, which after visiting multiple villages, I realized it was not an efficient method and went to trade for the bells instead. All right, it saddens me to do this, but we're gonna have to break into my cash bank emerald savings account to actually get all these bloody um, bells because this guy charges a price of 36 emeralds per bell. So we're gonna bring out the whole army's worth of um, emeralds. Oh my God, it's here, no way. We've done it, that's the last bell. Going back a bit, whilst I was waiting for the villager trades to refresh, I ended up getting beds done, which again, I'm not getting all the colors because I'm too impatient. Crafted beehives. All right, so after AFKing at the honey farm, I got this again. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go get 600 planks and then go and craft the bee boxes. Narrator. Thank fuck, that was so annoying. All right, beehives are done. Cauldrons. There we go, this cauldron is done. And also composters, which was some insane progress. Dang. After a bit of a well-earned break, I came back ready to make a good dent into the list. So I decided to start with flower pots, which after a bit of clay mining and smelting was finished. Bang, done. Actually, whilst the clay was cooking, I flew around with my elytra and killed every cow and horse in sight to gather 200 leather to make 200 item frames, 100 of which will be for the normal item frames and the other 100 for the glow item frames later down the line. Do we need the glow ones as well? Man? And once I was done with the item frames, I hit up the mines to get 100 diamonds to make some jukeboxes. Bang. Bang. Ladders were probably the easiest on this category, just needed to mine down the bamboo for some sticks. Alright, pretty easy. Next up was normal and soul campfires, which just took a lot of logs, coal from my farm, and sticks from bamboo. Camp. And soul campfires, I just quickly went to the nether to get some soul soil. Banners just require some sticks and wool. Now, I decided to tackle the task of getting lodestones, and if you take a look at the recipe, you'll know why it's difficult. So when I thought mining for ancient debris was over, it comes back to bite me. We so back, baby. 400 ancient debris, and a few days later, here we are. I think I've got all the ancient debris here, so I'm just gonna go cook it up, and yeah. Dang, there we go. I kind of forgot respawn anchors existed until I saw it on the wiki page. It was kind of a pain farming the gold to trade for the crying obsidian, but we did it. Yeah, so I have the exact amount of crying obsidian here. We just need the glowstone, so I'm gonna go quickly mine that. Also, the glowstone was pretty easy to get. All right, so got, I think I got all the glowstone I need, so we'll head back home and craft everything up. Next was scaffolding, and with the bamboo forest and string from my creeper farm, we were good to go. I didn't realize how hard getting 200 sponge would be, because the first two monuments I visited just didn't have a sponge room. But once I found the third monument, every monument after that had a sponge room, so it wasn't too bad of a block except for finding the damn structure. And another one. Perfect. Whilst the wet sponges were smelting to become dry, I made the required TNT. Yeah, who knows when you need more TNT. And when the sponges were done, we only had three blocks left. Alright, well that's enough. So coming back the next day from being AFK at the farm, no, I got I'm my 100 with the skeleton skulls, and yes, I'm only getting one type of skull. I don't have that much time. Well, I do, but I don't want to spend my whole day playing and editing Minecraft. Did I tell you that glow squids have now become my most hated mob in this game? Because getting a hundred of those glow ink sacks is not fun and it's all to just have some pitiful decoration on my item frames I'll never use. They only spawn in dark places below Y equals 30. 
So off to a deep ocean I went, slaughtering every one of those bastards, until I had a hundred glow ink sacks I could use to craft the glow item frames. I mean, we have it all, but you know, just out of spite, I'm gonna kill this dude as well. Oh, that feels good. Glow item frame. Glow item frame. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know these blocks existed. Next, I enslaved a 100 block radius of chickens to mass produce eggs for me to make cakes, which is a pretty hard process, as you can only craft one at a time. Like, look at this. Chickens. We're done. The eggs have been finished. Last one. One, two, three. This should be our last kick. Bang. Okay, so 27, 54, 81. Uh, 90, 99, 100. Yep. Well, conduits are the last block for this category, and this will be tough because not only will I have to make a drowned farm for 800 Nautilus shells, I also have to find 100 separate buried treasures for the hearts of the sea. So once the materials for the farm had been obtained, I went to a deep ocean and started building, which after an hour or two was finished. And with like four-ish hours of AFK, there are around 200 Nautilus shells in storage. With some more AFK, I managed to get the net 800 Nautilus shells required, leaving me to get hearts of the sea, which was completed over the course of multiple days giving me the necessary resources to craft the conduits. Ladies and gentlemen, after many trips back and forth to get food and fireworks, and to repair my elytra, I've finally done it. After like four days of just grinding out hearts of the sea, I have now just you watch as we take all this and we craft a hundred conduits. That is so sexy. You know what that means? We are done with the utilized pool category. Well, this is kind of heartwarming and sad as this is our last category of blocks ever. And it isn't even difficult at all, just requires a lot of redstone, but nevertheless, this is a great achievement. First up is buttons, which require every wood type, stone, okay, and blackstone. You've seen me gather all wood types at least 15 times already, so from now on, I'm not showing wood collection. Easy peasy. Next was Daylight Detector, and I did not know how expensive these things are. Like, look at this. That's like 300 quartz right there. And also 300 glass to get these done. Bang. And surprise, surprise, dispensers were also really expensive, requiring 100 bows. Luckily, I had enough string from the creeper farm. Although, it was a right pain in the ass to craft, but we got there in the end. We have done dispensers, finally. That took five years of crafting. With dispensers out of the way, it was time to do droppers, which, in comparison, was so easy, only requiring some cobble and a hundred redstone dust. Drop. Dropper? I hardly know her. Anyway, um... Well, next was doors, and I did say I was not going to show you any more wood chopping, so you're welcome. Yep, that's every block, I think. Except for iron, of course. So we'll go and turn these into logs, craft them up, and easy peasy. Guess what? I had to do that process again for trapdoors. I won't show much of the crafting because it's just the same, but more of it. Bang. I can't catch a break with the wood related stuff because I then went on to make fence gates. Well, I definitely just committed mass eco-terrorism. Jesus Christ. Honey was a pleasant switch up of sitting AFK in a farm, waiting for 400 bottles of honey. But it worked, so I'm not complaining. Hoppers, I just use the iron farm. Levers, just mined some stone. And lightning rods, mined and smelted some copper. 
No blocks, I just mined some redstone. And of course observers, just a bit of quartz on redstone. Normal pistons were simple too, but I had to kill some slimes to get sticky pistons crossed off the list as well. Uh, uh. We are now in the final stretch of this category, with only 15 block types left. So we'll get straight back to work, looking at pressure plates, which again is just every wood type, plus some iron and gold for the weighted versions. Bang, and that's heavy weight, light weight of pressure plate done, sorry. Alright, that's that one done. Mangrove, cherry, bamboo, that, that. Next was the four rail types being the normal rails, activator rails, detector rails, and powered rails, all of which require a lot of iron. Luckily, we have a very efficient farm to fix that issue. All right, cool beans. One, two, that's detector rails done. Powered rails. One, two, bang. Then I needed to get a bunch of stuff requiring redstone dust to craft, such as redstone dust itself. Bang. Comparators. Comparator. Bing, bing, and that's comparator. Repeaters. Alright, that's repeaters done. Lamps. Redstone lamp. And of course, redstone torches. Redstone torch. Bang, bang. And that's redstone torch done. I went to the swamp to pay the slimes a visit and murder them all for slime blocks. Sick. And immediately got the wheat from my farm. Crafted some hay bales and made target blocks, leaving us with three blocks left. The last three blocks on our list. You know, there was a point where I never thought we would make it here, but we are now. So let's smash these out. I had to craft 200 tripwire hooks to make trap chests, and also just for the tripwire hooks, leaving us with one block and its string of all things. I wanted to make this impactful, so I walked around an abandoned mineshaft collecting cobwebs for the string. One more. This is, this is our last thing we have to get for the whole entire of this series. In three, two, one. We'll fly back, put it into the chest, and we're done. We're finished. It's been a good journey. It really has. But now, we gotta put this to rest in a really good fashion. I think this challenge, at its core, was meant to be a very innocent take on Minecraft's simplest features of mining blocks and crafting to improve your way of living and increase those odds of you surviving that first night just bit by bit upgrading that dirt shack to the mega mansion you will now call home and you wouldn't have it any other way but through the hundreds or thousands of hours this video took to make that somehow got distorted into the monstrosity that it is now taxing me mentally and physically instead of that relaxing and calming experience minecraft is so as a finishing touch to my everlasting journey i decided to rewind and look back on my time in this world by going back to the initial roots of this game about blocks and built a cozy house deep in a spruce forest where I retired this world to never be played again and cemented as a memory not one of pain or hardship but one of victory, happiness and most of all fulfillment. As I was hanging up my armor and tools to lay there to rest, I took one last look at my achievements in this great adventure whether that be my first steps on the land I would call home for the foreseeable future, or the months on end I spent in the nether, but as all good things must, this will come to an end. And so, I took my seat in the comfort of the place I call home, on my throne of many triumphs, and took a deep breath, and disconnected, once and for all. You know, a great man once said at the end of his tireless war, that spoke to me at that moment, which was, finally, I'm free.